Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. Now, today's review is going to be slightly uh, different for me. In fact, totally out of my uh, comfort zone, really. Because, as you know, I usually do tool reviews, uh, tools, gadgets. Usually tools I bought from Lidl's or Aldi and stuff like that. Stuff I'm well familiar with being a gas engineer for 42 years, re retired now, but and a keen DIYer, so... Um, I'm sort of like not too bad with power tools and knowing whether they're good or not. But today's uh, review, like I say, is out of my comfort zone. And it's just something I've just bought for me. Just because I personally fell in love with it. And I've, I've thought, sod it, why not treat myself? Instead of keep getting tools and stuff like that. Treat myself and I've gone and bought this. Now... As you can see, it's a watch. It's a Sega design. I've always loved watches, and I love watching watch reviews. Now, one watch review site I really like is called Just One More Watch, run by a Scottish guy called Jody, living in Australia. And it's a great channel. It goes into depth, and it's great presentation style. Checks how accurate they are, really good nighttime shots, stuff like that. And I really enjoy watching them. So it's going to be nothing like the standard of that. Because I basically know nothing about watches. I bought this, like I say, purely because I fell in love with the look of it. Whether it's a great watch or not, I don't know. It's getting some good reviews. And I know it's not absolute rubbish. But yes, there will be better watches and all that. But it's a purely personal thing, isn't it, watches? And I just love the look of this. So... Uh, I don't think Jody will be watching this. Great if he is, but uh, like I said, don't expect that sort of standard and uh, accuracy of reviews. But this is it. It's a Sega design. Now, I first saw this uh, earlier last year in the Z series, and I absolutely fell in love with the shape of it. It's very sort of reminiscent, as you'll know, of a Richard Mille watch, which cost hundreds of thousands of pounds so they're slightly above my uh, pay grade but i did love the uh, the look of the z series let's have a look at them online now and i'll uh, i'll show you what i mean so this is the uh, the z series watch a very similar shape that like i said that sort of richard meal sort of shape which i absolutely love and i've never had an automatic watch in my life and I love the skeleton look of these. So uh, sort of everything sort of came together. And I was going to get one of these. And again, I love the orange strap. So I almost pulled the trigger last year and bought one of these. But I saw recently a sort of update. It's a, it's a different model, so, but it's very, very similar. Came out. And it's this one. Now, I'm a huge aviation fan. Um, I've flown model aircraft all my life. I learned to fly. Got my private pilot's license in 1984. Sadly, it's long ago lapsed. But I've always been an aviation nut. And as you can see, this one has got an aircraft as the hour hand. Looks a bit sort of like F-18 Hornet. And a missile as the the minute hand. There's no second hand on this, like there was on the Z counter, but there is the loom on it. So uh, you're sacrificing a second hand and gaining some luminosity. But uh, they call it the aircraft carrier design. And I got it in the blue strap. You can get it in the black strap. But you can see on this, I'll put links to these uh, two sites below. But you can see the price on here is 240 That's from Seagull Design Direct. Now, I'll show you this. This is what I got it for. Similar price on AliExpress, but they had an offer on at the time. As you'll see down here, it was 199.85, so just under 200 So I saved myself about 30 quid. Took about three weeks to arrive from AliExpress, as things do. So this is what it comes in. It's a metal, as you can hear, T. 
tin box. If we just uh, take it off, so yeah, nicely presented. I'd prefer it if they knocked like 20 quid off the watch and just gave it in a cardboard box, but uh, never mind. Nice sort of uh, parchment style, sort of paper with all the stuff on it. Now you also get, I'm going to show you this short, hang on, I'll show you now. You get with it. Now this is a joke, this, really. As a sort of special gift, it says, you get this t-shirt. And it's the tiniest t-shirt you can imagine. It would probably fit the aforementioned Jody really well because he's dead slim but for the likes of me <laughs> things out of, the, out of the question i'll show it on me in a minute it's not a pretty sight but uh i'll show it on me here it is what do you think of this yeah well i promise you i'd uh, show you the t-shirt on <laughs> this is it it is not a comfy fit if this was underpants i'd be talking in a very very high voice by now but uh yeah If you've got a bit of a girth like me, it's not going to fit. It is very, very, very tight. So uh, enough of that. Let's get back to uh, something a bit more comfy. So, uh, yeah, enough of that. But uh, you can see it all comes really sort of creased. It's wrapped around a little... Uh, it's packed up in polythene really, really tight and wrapped around with this paper. But uh, instead of a done an extra large which fits most people it would have been a lot better but it's a really really as you saw there not a pretty sight on somebody of uh, a few pounds weight so that's one thing come with it and you could also pick an optional color of an additional strap so i picked this one the red one you can get orange and uh, black i think i'm not too sure but that's, like I said, that's the watch. And as you can see, it's got a picture of the aircraft on the thing. Now, they call it the aircraft carrier edition. This is supposed to represent the centre line down the runway of the uh, the aircraft carrier. As you see, I don't think there's too much anti-reflective coating on the glass. It is a sapphire glass on the front. And it's a mineral glass on the back so uh i'll just show you in close up now just uh, taken with the macro lens of me my phone and uh, then we'll show it under the microscope as well so here in uh, close up you can see it's not that easy to see actually what time it is um yeah, if I'd have wanted a really easy to understand watch i'd have just bought a normal casio digital or something like that i bought this for its actual style and just the way it looks so uh, yeah not the easiest to read but uh, still uh, i think it looks great now this is it under the microscope and you can actually see the little sort of hammer of that escapement device thing or whatever going in the little cogwheel there uh, so just a quick trip around just to show you the the machining and like i said a top quality watch obviously would be fantastic engineering here with, with no marks whatsoever but as you'll see shortly on this there are some stains you can just see them around that periphery there them little brown splodges they're totally invisible these to the naked eye and like i say you can't even see them really in the the macro shots it's only under the microscope but uh curious to what they are whether there's some sort of stain Looks like some like acid used in machining or something like that. I don't know. That's that little uh, hammer again. I've no idea what it's called. You experts will uh, enlighten me, I'm sure. But that looks like some like little ceramic part going in the escapement wheel. And is that a counterbalance jewel? I don't know. But it's fascinating because it looks like a little heartbeat. So this is the back of the watch now. Showing the jewels and the machining on the rotor. So 
So I don't know how many times magnification this is, but uh, quite a lot. Yeah, and it still fascinates me to think of hundreds of years ago, they used to machine these by hand. Things, uh, obviously, all machine made now, but I'll bet that's like just fractions of a thousandth of an inch across or something. Much thinner than a human hair. But, uh, yeah, you ox watch experts will be able to say how this compares to the proper class watches. I know it's down at the bottom end, machining-wise, and stains and things, but... Uh, like I say, you can't see this with a naked eye. These red things are like plastic supports. They mention that on the website. And again, you can see like a bit of swarf around there, but you can't see it with a naked eye. They like grip the whole mechanism. And uh, I think there's like a shockproof mounting. So they're mounted in plastic instead of direct to the mainframe. So yeah, them little uh, spots on the metal, um, little blemishes seen under the microscope, I dare say on a genuine uh, Richard Mille or a Rolex or something like that, that uh, you won't get them little uh, blemishes, but uh, you, you definitely cannot see them with the naked eye. You can't even see them really under the macro lens of the, of the phone. It's only when you put it under a microscope, so it doesn't bother me in the least that. But uh, yeah, um, so uh, let's have a look what it looks like uh, on my wrist with both of the straps. Now they come with, it comes with these quick release spring bar thingy majigs. Again, I've never, they've been out years, I know, but I've never had a watch with these on. Every time I wanted to change a strap, it's been really awkward shoving a tiny screwdriver in the spring end. But these, they're dead easy, you just pull them back with your fingernail it pops out and you can uh, pop the new strap on that's the original blue one that it comes with and this was the optional red one i picked obviously no aircraft or runway design printed on it it's a generic sega design strap but uh, looks good in red now this is out in the garden now i'm sorry i filmed this um in portrait mode on me my phone i uh, should have filmed it in landscape i know but i've, I've tried to crop it and zoom in as much as I can but sorry about the bars each side but you can see there is quite a lot of reflection I don't think there's much anti reflective coating that was the original strap here it is on the red looking equally good I think on the red you can see Sega design is etched into the the buckle there now, now I also tested the loom again not as accurately as the proper watch review channels do but I did put it in a darkened room I held it to a light for a couple of minutes put it in a totally darkened room and filmed it and uh, I'll show you shortly how long it lasts speeded up on my phone now I'm debatable what what the uh, use of loom is really I mean great you go out in the sun and it sort of charges up or under a strong artificial light it will charge itself up as you know and then when you go into total darkness it stays luminous for about 10 minutes but how often do you go from bright daylight or a very brightly lit room into total darkness unless you were like changing a fuse in the cupboard or something that you'd have a torch with you anyway um most of the scenario is you sat in the pub at night or in the restaurant or something like that under subdued lighting so it's not really going to sort of charge up and then you go outside into the darkness you look at your wrist and, and it's not lit up very well because you haven't charged up nobody holds it up to a light in the pub or or whatever to charge it up so i'm not too bothered about how great the loom is you can see here it says on the website super luminova it's swiss super luminova is 10 times stronger than previous luminescent paints and can can emit light for up to 20 years now there's no reason to fear the dark and it shows you brightly lit there but uh, yeah it's uh like i say it's of, of limited use in in my opinion but uh, there we go okay so this is 16 minutes uh sped up and condensed down into 40 seconds so i put it in a, as dark a room as i could get the little tiny white spots you can see are reflections in the glass from 
the bits of light that are in the room still coming through the, the curtains but uh, it was pretty black room and like i said this is over a period of 16 minutes speeded up and you can see after uh, just about 10 minutes so far there's only a bit of loom left so as i mentioned less important to me luminosity but uh, yeah that was 16 minutes so there you have it so like i said at the beginning a bit out of my comfort zone this review but i hope it's given you just a few uh, looks at the watch if you're thinking of getting it or something similar and like i said there's only one reason i bought it because i personally love it so yeah i'll probably get loads of comments below saying that it's chinese rubbish and blah 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 but nearly everything is Chinese these days and I certainly can't afford anything like a genuine one Richard Veil or Rolex or anything like that it's made I believe a company called Xiaomi took over at Sega Design a friend of mine's got an electric unicycle they make electric scooters and make phones and they're pretty well respected in their electronic components uh, and to my total virgin brain when it comes to watches it looks very nice and very well made and like i said the reason i got it is because i actually love it for no other reason than that i fell in love with the looks of it it's a purely personal thing some will hate it some will love it i love it and if it makes me feel better well that's all that matters i look at it i sit in the pub at night and uh, i look at it and i think oh that looks fantastic and if i think that and it cheers me up we all need cheering up uh, in the, in these times, don't we? So uh, hopefully it's been of some use, this review. Yeah, I'll catch it for another one uh, very, very soon. It'll be back to me usual tool reviews and stuff like that, stuff I'm, I'm more comfortable with, I'm sure. But uh, anything that interests me, I'll stick a review on there of it. So if you do want to subscribe, please click the little picture of the shed here. And I'll be back as soon as I can with one of those other reviews. Catch you for that one. Thanks for watching this one. Bye for now.